Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and another card making video. This is episode one of my January Stamp Set of the Month series. I'm so glad to be back with a brand new year and a brand new series just for you. I asked you guys for suggestions of stamp sets that you would like to see me use in this series and the stamps that I'm using came up multiple times. It was the most suggested and so that's the set I went with. It's the special delivery stamp set from Lawn Fawn. This week I'm including the Birdhouse Builder die set with that. I'm going to make a Slimline Magic Iris with that die set and then also turn that little birdhouse into a little treat box or should I say tweet box. <laughs> All right, enough corniness. Let's get started. All right, here is the birdhouse die set and it's designed to work with magic iris. I die cut the house itself from the Lawn Fawn wood grain cardstock in dark brown and then I die cut the roof and the bottom piece that is scalloped from red cardstock. Next, I'm using the Magic Iris die set to create the interactive element on my card. I die cut three of the largest rings and then die cut one of those with the gear die, as I like to call it. And then I die cut three of these balloon-like pieces from that same wood grain cardstock and inserted them into the ring I just die cut with the gear. Now you're gonna wanna use mini glue dots that are 3 16th of an inch and you're going to put one on each of the x's at the end of these balloon like pieces so they need to be a certain size in order to make this work if they're bigger um, you're not going to have success with the movement um, next we're going to take the second of our donut like pieces and sandwich that and stick it down to those glue dots now you want to make sure that those um, balloon like pieces are firmly or um, inside that donut piece and not sticking out. We're gonna flip that over and add on these strips that I die cut three of once again. There are brackets on the back side of this die that you can see and you just wanna line those up with the bracket flush with the inside ring of this donut. Next, we're gonna take the tab and you're gonna flip over your mechanism so that you have the top side up and one of the strips facing you. And then I took two of the tab pieces and glued them together to make it more sturdy. You're gonna to wanna to glue this on right next to the piece, one of those strips that is facing you so that it makes a little V shape, not overlapping and not a gap, but a nice firm V. Next, we're gonna take that third ring and put it over the top, and then we're gonna put adhesive on those tabs that are still sticking out, or the strips, and then we can fold those over. Now, when you fold them over, you want it to be a loose fit. You don't want it to be too tight, otherwise it's not gonna be able to move. So just stick them down um, without pulling it tight. And then when you flip it over, you can fold in the little tabs at the end of the balloon, and that is it. That is a magic iris. So at first it can be a little hard to move it the first time, but after that it's much smoother to get going. It's also easier to do once that's stuck down. We're gonna set that aside, and we're gonna come in with our background panel, or our, it's actually the card front panel and we're making a background on it. So this piece is nine inches by four inches. I covered the whole thing with Salty Ocean and then I'm bringing in the Conversation Hearts stencil set. I'm only using the open hearts this time and because I did just a light layer of that Salty Ocean, I can go over the top of it again with Salty Ocean. I have been doing this technique like crazy this month. It's one of my favorite to do. So I am going in with a little bit heavier hand this time so that the hearts are going to be darker than the sky. And also I, when I did the light background, I don't really worry so much about perfect ink blending when I do a sky. I like to have some spots that are lighter than others and some spots that are darker because that looks like a real sky to me. So um, do it how you like, but I just wanted to tell you that because you'll see it here. There's some lighter spots. Once that's done, I'm taking my Liquid Stardust. When my Liquid Stardust bottle got low, I added a little bit of water to it so that I could just dip my paintbrush in and do splattering just like this. You still have to shake it up, it will separate. And then I use a um, scruffy little paintbrush and the edge of a window sheet 
to make a fine mist of splatter across my background. I'm gonna set that aside to dry and bring in my Oliver's Stitched ABCs and die cut out the word tweet from red cardstock. I'm just gonna lay these down on my background panel as well as my birdhouse so that I can figure out where the opening for my magic iris needs to be. And I figure to truly get the right idea about placement, I needed to go ahead and glue on the bottom scallop piece to my birdhouse. So I did that and then once I have it where I want it, I'm just gonna trace that opening like that. And then I'm gonna need a plain circle die. So I brought in this tag die set. It had a, a circle that was just the right size to cut an opening. Um, you could probably find many other circles that will work. And then this is the die set you normally use if you're gonna have your magic iris be on the cover of your card where you want the iris to be hidden. So I just laid that down so the holes lined up with each other and then I traced where the opening would be for the pull tab and I cut that out with scissors like that. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and glue down my letters that say tweet and because I'd already laid them out, I kind of have an idea for the placement and how I want them to be. So I just went for it. Um, this is a little stressful to me. Like I want my letters to be straight. I want them to be evenly spaced. I want them to be centered on a card, but I'm not a computer. So sometimes I just breathe and let it go. Yeah. So I glued the roof onto my little birdhouse. I love this die cut from that wood grain cardstock. It makes me so happy. So I'll glue that down so that the hole on the birdhouse matches up with the opening in my card. And you could do a little ink on that opening if you didn't want it to be such a stark contrast, a little brown or um, even a little blue like this guy. Now, when you're adhering this to your card, you can adhere it, like I'm gonna adhere it to my card front first. So you can put glue everywhere. But the part that sticks down to the card base, you don't wanna put glue everywhere. So just take note of that. Now there's this wonky little pull tab die thingy that goes with this um, add-on for the magic iris. You really want to attach it before you put your magic iris behind your card because now I have a little bit of the white part showing. But what it does is it makes a flush edge of your um, mechanism, your your tab, your pull tab. So um, I'll do a little card surgery so that I don't have a white part showing later. But now it's time to go ahead and do some stamping. Finally, I am stamping out the two birds from this special delivery stamp set. And I'm going to use jet black ink so I can Copic color them. And I'm only stamping these two images first because I wanted to stamp the wings. Now, this is what I didn't think about. There's no die to cut out the birds with the wings already there because this is a stamp set that gives you choices where you wanna put the wings, if you wanna use the wings on an interactive element, which we will get to later in this series. Um, so you, if you want the wings to be behind them, you should die cut the wings separately. And this is my first time doing it. I didn't think about that. So I will show you my workaround for this that does not involve cutting with scissors, but you could easily cut these birds out with scissors if you wanna stamp the wings right on them and have them be cut out. So we'll go ahead and do some Copic coloring. I'm using E13 for my lightest color on my owl's belly, and then E39 around the edge of that. And then I'm gonna blend that out with my E30, or my E13. I'm only using these two colors, and I think it worked out really well for this instance. A lot of this is going to be covered because my owl is going to be holding a little envelope. So now for his wings and his head, I'm using E25 as my lightest, E47 as my darkest for those shadows, and then I'll bring in my E27 to blend that out, and then back in again with my lightest color, E25, to really soften out that blend. For his nose, or really his beak, and his feet, I'm using E04. I just didn't feel like I wanted any yellow or orange in this project, so that's why I chose that color. Next I have my reds, so I did R17 as my lightest, R39 for my darkest, and R29 for my midtone. And for my bird, he's so cute. I wanted a bluebird, so I have my B zero markers and also a BG. I have BG05 for my darkest, B04 for my lightest, and BG02. I said that wrong, but they're on the screen. You can see <laughs> what I did. And then I just colored his beak and feet red. And I'm now adding some highlights with my white gel pen. 
to finish off these birds. Now for cutting them out, yeah, I'm gonna be using my Cameo Silhouette. I've been using this a lot late, lately. Um, well, I've been showing it a lot lately. There you can see all the markers. Um, I use it more than I show on camera. So I just wanted to show you how I use it. And um, maybe you have an, a different electronic cutter, but let me show you what I do. So for the Cameo Silhouette, you wanna put this paper on your pick skin mat take a picture with your phone, open it up on your computer, and then open it in the Cameo Silhouette Design Studio. So here I am clicking on that picture. It always gives me a message that something's not right, and I say to upload it anyway. So there it is. And then I'm gonna just make this screen a little bit smaller so you can see the whole pigskin mat. And then you're gonna come over to the right-hand side and pick the little butterfly icon, and this is to trace them. So now I'm selecting the images I want to be traced, and then I say trace the outer edge, but it traced some of the inside parts. So I'm gonna click undo and show you how to fix that if that happens to you. You wanna go up here where it says threshold and increase that till it fills it almost all the way in with yellow. Then you can go ahead and say trace outer edge and that has fixed the problem. Next, I'm going to ungroup these or release the compound path select one of them and then click the star which is the offset and you can see it put an outline around it now I'm changing the offset to 0 0.04 and that's going to bring it down to the size of a regular die cut lawn fawn image I'm going to repeat that with the other bird and the other thing you really want to remember is once you have the offset to 0 0.04 you want to come back in and click that trace line and delete the trace line otherwise it's going to cut there also and we don't want that we just want the outline of the image cut. So here when I click send, I can see I have the outline only, not the trace line, and then I can adjust my cut settings. I like my blade set to about seven, and I increase my force up to about 23. And there you can see it just cut out, just a very small clip of it cutting out, and it looks perfect. So then I can remove those from the mat, and they're ready to go for my card. All right, so now this die set does have a little die that cuts around the beak. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the owl, and then I can tuck and adhere down that little envelope for him to carry. I'm also going to adhere the little hat onto him because I think it's darling. And then we'll put the birds onto the card. So here I have my little bird on the birdhouse, and then the owl is gonna be flying in. So I'm gonna put that up on some foam squares flying in with a special delivery, maybe a little Valentine card. And my card says, you are so tweet, like you are so sweet. <laughs> All right, so now I'm adding two layers of fun foam to this card because I need to match the level of my magic iris. And so that's what I decided to do. Also, I thought I was gonna put something sweet in my card. I'll show you that in just a second. So here I am only putting adhesive, in this case the foam, onto the back of those strips. That's the only place you want to adhere your magic iris down to your card. So on the back side, you only put it on the back of those strips when adhering it. Otherwise the magic iris will not move. So I'm putting that down to my card. Let's open this up. I really thought I was gonna put a little piece of candy in there, a little something. I don't know what happened to that one. It got eaten. I, I don't know who did it at all. Mm -mm. So because that idea did not work out, one of you can maybe try to perfect that. I was going to be really clever, I thought, and have candy in there. I decided to stamp and color and die cut out all of these cute little love notes and the ones that have the paper sticking out, I did stamp on them. Happy Heart Day, You Are a Hoot, and Chirp Chirp. So we'll go ahead now and fill in the magic iris. It's not as exciting as having a piece of candy in there. So it is a little disappointing to me because I thought you were so tweet, sounded like you were so sweet. And yeah, anyway, I think they look cute and I'm sure I could find a small enough, flat enough candy that would fit in there. But it was none of the ones that I had at my house. So... <laughs> There you go. And that is the front of the card. I am going to do a little bit of embellishment. Oh, here's where I do the little card surgery because you can see um, the pull, the white part of the pull tab still 
it's not cute. So I just did a little snip snip and got rid of that. This is why you want to put that on before you glue down your magic iris because you can follow the curve of that tab when you glue it on. All right, so now I'm going to cover each of these letters like a crazy person with some glaze. It's just, it's a time consuming thing, but it's so cute in the end and it really makes my letters pop. So I, I'm glad I did it. Now I'm adding red hots in and around my flying owl here. These are just little, um, like epoxy looking hearts. I love them. I use them a lot and I think they're the perfect little addition to this card. So now I'm gonna let that dry and let's move on to creating the box. So I have already die cut two houses. One of them I embellished with some of the other die cuts in the set and I die cut and colored my bird and I used a different um, set of blue markers. So if you wanted to see that combination, you could pause the screen there. And then I glued the little bird into the house. He's so cute. All right, now for my box, I need a piece that is one and a fourth by six and three fourths. I'm gonna score that at one fourth of an inch and one inch, turn it and score it at two and a fourth and four and one half. Here's what the piece looks like. Then I'm gonna snip away at the intersecting points, a tiny little triangle. This will make it much easier to adhere than if I just snipped right on the line. And then you can also cut a little hair off of the corners, and there we have it. Then you wanna put some double stick tape on all of those tabs. I used one fourth of an inch tape because my tabs were one fourth of an inch. Then you're gonna take that middle section and line it up with the bottom of the brown part of this birdhouse. I'm gonna press and hold that into place. And then I'll do the same thing on the two side flaps, lining it up with the edge of the birdhouse. This birdhouse is angled, so that's why um, lining it up with the edge is really nice. And repeat that on the other side. Once that's dry and secure enough, I'm gonna remove the backing on the rest of the foam tape and add my second die cut birdhouse. Now you could decorate the back side of this as well and put something on it too, but I left mine pretty plain with just the roof and the bottom piece there. So I had a little trouble like figuring out how to best line this up, but really the best way is to line up the bottom of the box with the bottom of the brown part of the birdhouse. So once I remembered to do that, the rest of it went pretty easy. And I did use double stick tape and glue because it just is more secure. And there it stands up, so nice. And I'm gonna put my mini, I never, always say this wrong, Stroom waffle and a bag of tea in there. I always get those as free gifts from Trinity, but you could also put your treat in a bag with a little tag and tie the top and stick the bag in there too, which I barely showed, but that was the idea. And there is the cute little house. These are so easy to make and adorable. So I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Stamp set of the month is my favorite thing. I love connecting with you guys over these creations. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. Um, you might find me making more of these little birdhouses. They're so cute. All right. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I will be back again next Tuesday with episode two featuring the special delivery stamp set. So make sure you tune in for that. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe because I have new stamping videos all the time. You can find all the things I used listed and linked free below. And I hope you have a fabulous week. Happy stamping. Bye.